Disappearing Mummies is a mystery deeper than it seems, and the great archaeologist Sylvester Carnaby is determined to find out the hidden reality. Deep down inside the earth, the mummies have built their own eternal kingdom. One of the famous mummies here is Tut, a talented charioteer and the racing champion of the decade. He has been winning the competition, but now he's retiring voluntarily. His fans have gathered around his house to get an autograph. A girl even confesses to him, but Tut isn't ready for marriage. Mummies live for eternity, and Tut doesn't want to get so married so early. Later that evening, Tut's younger brother Sekim asks the reason for his sudden retirement. Tut changes the topic immediately. He doesn't want anyone to know that he's afraid of riding because of the accident he faced in the last race. Little does he know, another huge accident is waiting for him. The next morning, Tut goes out to buy groceries. While returning, he notices an old lady struggling to cross the road. He rushes to help her, but runs into a careless driver. The proud woman blames Tut for the incident and drives away. She's none other than Nefer, the only daughter of the great king Pharaoh. Nefer often seeks out of the palace for entertainment. She's bored with a royal and sophisticated life. Nefer wants to explore the world and be more than just a naive princess. Her parents don't agree with that. She's the only heir and it's time for her to take over the responsibility of the throne. And for that, she needs to get married as soon as possible and become a queen. Nefer argues with her parents and refuses to marry a stranger. She wants to live a thousand years more of her single life before getting bonded to someone. Pharaoh convinces Nefer by telling her that the groom will be chosen specifically by the god of love. For this purpose, they arrange a huge ceremony and summon the phoenix bird sent by the god of love himself. This flaming bird will only land at the house of the chosen man. The phoenix flies high in the sky and passes through the streets. At this moment, Sekim was playing with his boomerang and missed his shot and uh, hit the poor phoenix. It swooped down right in front of Sekim, and the royals assume that the phoenix has made his choice and Pharaoh excitedly sends his men to bring the lucky guy. It's no other than Tut, who is least interested in getting married even if it's the princess. Pharaoh warns him of the punishment if he refuses to follow the order. According to tradition, Tut's eyes and tongue will be pulled out. Hearing this bizarre punishment, Tut agrees to the king's decision immediately. He's handed over the valuable engagement ring, and he must take care of it at any cost. Before leaving, Tut shares some words with Nefer. It's quite obvious that they hate each other already, and this marriage is just going to be a bitter compromise. The night sets in, and Tut marks his way home. But before that, he wants to hide the ring in a safe place. It's a storage far away in the desert, where Tut keeps his valuable belongings and trophies. He puts the ring in a locked cupboard and walks away. This storage leads to one of the pyramids in the human world. Sylvester has sent his robot to investigate the place. In the middle of the search, his mother calls and Sylvester hands the controller to his assistants. They are inexperienced and cause the robot to move abruptly. It destroys all the surroundings and also breaks out the ring from the cupboard. Sylvester gets delighted to get his hands on such a historical treasure. Meanwhile, Tut is boiling in with anger to see the destruction of his storage. Moreover, the ring is stolen and his life is at stake now. Tut knows that humans did it and he must bring it back. Regardless of the danger that lies in the living world, the two mummies, Tut and Sekim, travel to the top. They reach the broken pyramid and start looking for the ring, but they must avoid bright flashing lights. They can reveal the identity of mummies. Sekim has found the camp where the collection is being taken. The engagement ring is there too. Sylvester packed it in a wooden box and loaded it onto the truck. Tut tries to cleverly sneak in but he gets on the wrong truck. Sekim guides him to the right way, but the trucks have already started to drive on their way. The mummies hide inside one of the boxes and get shifted to the cargo ship. When they get out, they find themselves trapped in a huge locker. Tut hears someone coming inside and gets ready to attack. 
The door gradually opens, and Nefer walks inside. She gets startled by Tut and hits him hard. After getting back to their senses, they realize the door is locked again. Nefer inquires why Tut broke the mummy's law and came to the living world. Sekim tells the whole truth, but Nefer can't explain her side. She is already sneaked out of the palace and now all three of them are stuck in the center of the sea. After traveling for days, the ship finally reaches England. And after roaming around for a while, the mummies finally spot Sylvester and hide inside his car. He's going to the theater to watch a musical with his mother. The mummies get dropped there too. They look around in confusion while standing in the middle of London. A group of fans mistake them for musical artists and start taking their pictures. The flashing lights reveal the dead side of the mummies and the fans run away in fear. The mummies pick up the cameras, assuming them as weapons, and enter the theater. Today's musical is based on the Egyptian queen Ida. All the artists have dressed accordingly, and the mummies are mistaken for one of them. They go with the flow and start dancing on the stage. The lead artist presents to the queen's ring and continues singing. Nefer can't hold back and steps forward to claim the ring. Her magical voice captivates the audience and they give her a huge applause. No one suspects Nefer's identity except Sylvester. Being an archaeologist, he can recognize the jewels worn by Nefer. As the show ends, the mummies get out immediately and start looking for a way to get back to sea. They find a car, but have no idea how to drive it. Fortunately, they found a music artist. He introduces himself as Ed and offers them a ride. Actually, he's deeply impressed by Nefer's voice and wants to make her a professional singer. Nefer gets really overwhelmed by the offer. She always wanted to pursue singing, but no one in the palace understood her. Unfortunately, they don't have the time for this. They must return to their world. With a heavy heart, Nefer declines the offer and joins the mummies to find a way back home. Sekim takes this moment as a chance to reveal the truth about the Phoenix's choice. Both Nefer and Tut feel relieved to know they aren't soulmates. However, a silent romance is blooming between them gradually. Everything's going fine, but then... Sekem realizes that the ring they stole is fake. The real ring is still with Sylvester. Moreover, he has figured out the reality of Nefer. Discovering a mummy is going to be the research that will make Sylvester a famous archaeologist. He's started to look for Nefer already. Meanwhile, the mummies contacted Ed because they don't have a place to stay till they find the ring. Ed welcomes them warmly and writes a song for Nefer. He also gives them money to shop for new clothes. Ed also wants to shoot a music video. Nefer can't believe her dreams are becoming a reality, but they must stick to the plan. They need to find the ring. Tut reminds her of their reality, but Nefer refuses to accept it. She always wanted to make a decision for herself instead of following anyone's orders. Tut might seem like an insensitive guy, but he understands others well. He lets Nefer follow her heart and stands by her. In just a few days, she became a sensation. Her video gets millions of views and everyone around the world wants to know more about her. But the evil Sylvester has his own plans. Later that night, Nefer was chilling on the balcony questioning her feelings for Tut. She was completely lost in thought when the kidnappers climbed up the balcony and injected something to make Nefer sleep. Tut wakes up by the sudden noise and rushes out. He spots the kidnappers taking away Nefer, but he couldn't do anything to stop them. She's been taken to the Carnaby Museum for an exhibition. Tut can't let that happen to his fiance. He's going to risk everything to save Nefer. She's been locked inside the museum along with the other belongings that Sylvester stole from the pyramid. The cunning archaeologist is also looking forward to Tut's arrival. As soon as Tut enters the museum, he gets captured by Sylvester. Now, the only hope left is Sekim. He's afraid to go alone, but getting Ed's reassurance, Sekim reaches the museum. Surprisingly, he's more clever than his older brother. Sekim takes all the precautions so he doesn't get caught by security. He breaks into the room where Tut and Nefer are kept. They're all still under the effect of Sylvester's drug. Sekim keeps dragging them around, but they're just dozing here and there. On the positive side, they confess their love to each other, but they don't have time for romance because Sylvester and his men come after them. The mummies grab the engagement ring and rush to the main door. Luckily, Ed gets right there in time. 
he distracts the villains and the mummies run out of the museum. They find a vacant bus and get inside. Due to past trauma, Tut refuses to drive. Thankfully, Sekim knows the basics and takes the driver's seat. The bus runs at its fastest speed and Tut is frozen in place. However, Sylvester's still after them. He keeps hitting the bus again and again. Sekim loses control and needs the advice of an actual racing champion. He begs Tut and convinces him to help. Tut suggests driving to the nearby ramp. Just a few steps away, the bus takes a sudden turn while Sylvester's car rides over the ramp and drops in the boat. The mummies deserve to celebrate their success, but still they have an issue to resolve. How are they going to go back to Egypt? The sweet Ed proves to be helpful again. He offers them to get an airplane ride directly to Egypt. Tut leaves the decision to Nefer. She must choose how she wants to continually living. Either as Egypt's princess in the mummy world or as the viral singer surrounded by humans. Nefer decides to go back. It's too risky to stay with humans. While riding the plane, Nefer brings up the topic of marriage again. They both are doubting their decisions of breaking up. Before doing so, Nefer thanks Tut and calls him the bravest. Tut can't take the compliment. He's a coward who gave up racing because he got scared, and now he can't handle the high speed at all. Nefer smiles at his confession because she believes Tut is indeed brave, otherwise he wouldn't risk his life to save Nefer. Saying this, she ties the ring to a thread and hangs it around Tut's neck. After a few hours, they reach Egypt and walk back inside the pyramid. Tut still hasn't gathered the courage to accept his feelings for Nefer. He says the final goodbye and leaves without saying another word. Nefer returns to the palace and apologizes to her parents for disappearing for days. The story doesn't end here. Sylvester hasn't given up. He enters the mummy world on his excavator and destroys several buildings and enters the palace to capture Pharaoh. Nefer fights back with all her might, but she can't stop the evil Sylvester alone. Sekim delivers the news to Tut, but he refuses to help. Tut wants to cuddle ties with the princess as he doesn't consider himself a hero at all. Meanwhile, Sylvester takes away the pharaoh, and Nefer tries to save him, but Sylvester throws her down. Suddenly, Tut appears out of nowhere, bringing his chariot as well. Together, they stand against Sylvester's deadly excavator. Sekim cheers for them, and Nefer's right beside him too. He's not alone anymore, and realizing this, a bolt of energy flows through Tut's body as he continues driving. Unfortunately, they reach a cliff, and Nefer tries to grab Tut's hand, but he sacrifices himself to save Nefer. Before falling down the cliff, he confesses his love for her. The lonely princess starts to cry, but not for long, because Tut is saved. It's all thanks to the necklace Nefer gave him. He didn't want to waste another moment and proposes to Nefer right away. The marriage ceremony is held at the palace, and the lovebirds are tied together forever. Wait, Tut has a huge surprise for Nefer. He's arranged a concert at the wedding, so Nefer can continue living her passion. They might not have been chosen by the phoenix, but they're definitely made for each other. Love is not about perfection. You just need the right person who'll understand and cherish you for who you actually are.